got us into studying this problem. China's uh, rapid development um, fostered huge increase, massive increase, I would say, from rural areas to urban areas, and that my internal migration is mainly economically driven. The number, uh, the number of rural to urban migrants grew from 26% to 56%. So currently, according to the National Statistics Office in China, there may be more or less two, 240 million people that migrated from rural areas to urban areas, which is more or less 30% of um, the total uh, working force in rural areas. So we are talking about uh, huge waves of migration that happened specifically after the China entered WTO. So as a consequence, we observe huge increase um, in income inequality and also wage inequality. And urban worker um, actually performing the same kind of job can uh, earn five times more than a rural worker. All right, and many of these workers don't even have work permits. So um, there is another problem to this situation. It is that in China, there is de facto an um, immigration control, internal immigration control system that is driven by what we call the HUKU, which is the Household Re Registration System, which imposes restrictions to, those, to people in which they can get access to education, food stamps, and also health, public health. So the forecasting of how rural to, rural to urban population is going to increase, you see a massive increase that is actually uh, started to, um, to increase exponentially since uh, China entered WTO. Our data is telling us this, um, the red bars are actually the number of uh, migrants that, um, rural migrants, that they don't have any access to health, all right? And the, Re, uh, blue line is indicated those migrants that actually have employment. So there is also a very large number of migrants that they don't even have work or only have temporary work. The decomposition of migration by provinces. Um, so as those migrants don't have any access to health, um, acquiring any urban huku um, it's highly difficult. It can be obtained only through graduate education or very, um, or if those migrants get to work um, for the government or in a state-owned um, company, or if they work for a, at a very rank, high rank level of management. Uh, so the majority of migrants are completely excluded from the system. All right, so massive migration without access to health services unless privately provided, I don't have to tell you what kind of issues may cause. The question here is that we don't have a lot of studies analyzing what is the effect of the HUKU registration system on health outcomes for the reasons that my, the previous speaker highlighted. There is no data availability. The majority of the surveys don't follow those migrants. Uh, along the time. Um, it's not interesting for China to publish those data as well for obvious reasons. So we have to use data which is available at the ISA Institute by University of Bonn. It's a really recent uh, survey. Uh, it is very representative. We have more than 30,000 uh, observations, migrants there. And it also is a really rich survey in which we can control for income, education, gender, uh, uh, body mass, weight, uh, height. So it is a very rich survey which allows us to control for other uh, health and, uh, and socioeconomic variables that may affect health outcomes. So the main objective of the, of the study, as you can, as you can probably uh, know, um, understood uh, for my presentation is to study the interconnection in between uh, migrating, limited access to health, and what are the health outcomes for those migrants, to compare them with the urban, the natural born workers. The previous literature, literature I have resumed all the papers that are available for China. There is only one paper right now currently studying the effect of HUKU system by Sun from Columbia University. So I know we've been talking and, and about it. She's studying the connection, the causality effect right there, but she's using self-reported um, 
health outcomes. All right, so why, why our study doesn't, it does use self-reported uh, outcomes, but it also uses uh, other proxies for health outcomes. Um, mainly, a study suggests that migrants are reasonably healthy, so there is a self-selection problem. Uh, here, migrants tend to migrate when they feel uh, healthy enough, uh, and probably they are the best, so that's why they decide to, to migrate. There is no way right now with the data that we have that we can solve that issue. Uh, hopefully, um, there will be more data availability in the future and we can address those. Um, the issue is once they get into the city, as time passes, they get injured. They usually use their internal networks to get uh, treatment. Many of them, they don't have enough money to get that access, and that spreads over time, creating high risk of workplace accidents and um, contagious diseases. All right, so here are the specifics of the survey. So as I already said, survey contains data on socioeconomic indicators, so that actually allows us to fit the data into our simple regression and um, to get better uh, estimators. So from our data, so what you see is important uh, to control for years since uh, migration happened, and you see the median is more or less at seven years, right? Um, so, so here, that's, that's the data we have. And what is the body mass index by migrant status? For urban born, they actually have more body uh, mass than actually something that you observe in your data for another country than those rural migrants. Who has access to, to uh, health insurance? So the majority of urban born have access to health insurance. Those know is because they have other kind of, uh, they don't rely on the urban huku. They get private um, insurance through the employers. And as you see, the migrants from rural areas, the, major, the immense majority don't have any kind of insurance. They can get private insurance, and if they get um, to good works, the employer can provide those. So that's the part that you see here, the, the, the piece of the pie in red. Uh, but as, as you see, the majority of our uh, migrants in the survey don't have any access. So when it comes to problems with to self-reported health status, as you will say. Migrants, we see in our sample, that migrants have a high likelihood of uh, reporting better health outcomes. Because they are migrants, they don't want to actually uh, let know, the population know, others know that they may have some health issues. Because the majority, as I said, don't have work permits and they can be deported back to their regions, all right? So if we compare what, the answers of urban born uh, population and migrants, we see that this is a skew to the left hand side. All right, we have um, a very simple model, it's a linear regression as well, in which we are using some proxies for health. We are using the systolic and diastolic pressure, um, with um, accounts for, um, it's a reliable predictor of. Uh, cardiovascular diseases, early mortality, we also have grip strength, and we compare those results to see if they are robust enough with the self-reported uh, ranking. We control uh, for years of education, sex, um, and years of uh, migration, which is a very important determinant here, as I just showed you uh, in the previous data. All right, um, and the main important coefficient in which we are interested, it is if the HUKU registration system has an, any significant and meaningful effect on those health outcomes. I'm going to show you only uh, some regressions here. So for the systolic, um, so we had two waves, um, one in 2008 and one in 2009. Unfortunately, those are no migrants at uh, the same amount of migrants. So it's a panel, but we analyze by cross-section. All right, I'm showing you some of the results, which totally makes sense. The most important, uh, the most important parameter that has, uh, or variable that has an impact on health, it is gender, being especially being male, that's a dummy variable, and then the rural hukou which has an even larger negative um, impact than smoking habits 
Also, it makes sense marry people. You see, it will have a positive effect on, on, on health outcomes, which is very well backed up by the literature. They feel happier, they are more protective, etc. the network is bigger, etc. All right, it's similar results, similar impact when it comes to the rural hukum, right there, but highly, extremely highly significant and negative, all right? Um, as you can see here, the years since migration is also highly significant. However, the impact is not that large. And it's very similar. It doesn't matter what are the health outcomes that we are using as a dependent variable. And let's focus now on grip strength. The rural huku increases the beta coefficient, so the impact is even larger. So very um, robust results, preliminary results, but it's still robust. We have 30,000 observations here, so that's pretty good fit. Um, when it comes to health reported ratings, the coefficient is the lowest of all the regressions. It drops because there is obviously bias on here, as we saw, um, but it's uh, still negative and highly significant. So. To conclude, uh, results demonstrate that migrant status is a significant predictor of health outcomes um, by any kind of metrics that we have used, even the ones that are self-reported. Um, and it has higher impact on health outcomes than other risky uh, behaviors. So the flow of migration is going to be continued. Therefore, we want to prevent any kind of health uh, crisis that may happen in the future. So that's something that has to be addressed. It has been addressed in the past, com um, bef uh, before 1978, but after 1978, the HUKU system started to be enforced really more aggressively, all right? So it is time for the Chinese authorities to actually uh, start thinking about a future problem. There is already a problem, but a more, um, um, a higher impact problem that they may have in the future, all right? Restricting migrants' access to health care will have clear negative externalities and productivity of working, or of, of, of uh, labor productivity, firm productivity as well, and obviously it will increase the gap of inequality that we, by looking at the data, we already seen that within inequality in China, globally, I mean, total inequality has been declining, but within inequality in China has been increasing. So this is not going to help actually to reduce the gap. And as an image uh, is better than 1,000 words, this is the working conditions, the living conditions of uh, many rural uh, workers that decided to move uh, to the city. As you can see, it's not a very healthy environment, plus added they don't have access to health. Okay? Thank you very much.